Welcome to Massive Open Online course on Chemical Process Intensification. So, in this lecture, uh, we will discuss uh, something about mechanism of intensification that is uh, happened by mixing. And in the previous uh, lecture, we have discussed the mechanism of uh, intensification by some other means. Uh, so, in this lecture, we will get into that uh, mechanism of that intensification uh, uh, by mixing. And uh, you know that uh, first of all you have to know that uh, mixing principles, the, what is that mixing? So, it will be a term of that uh, replies homogenization or reduction in the variability of uh, concentration, temperature, etcetera. That means, in a suppose uh, system uh, where we have uh, actually discussed in the previous lecture regarding the uh, mechanism uh, of intensification by multiphase uh, mixer. And uh, in that case, uh, uh, to get into intensive mixing of uh, the those phases, you have to know the mechanism of mixing uh, phenomena. Now, that mixing will happen uh, based on what? Uh, means uh, that uh, you are uh, mixing the system in such way that uh, the concentration of the uh, phases uh, throughout the reactor or throughout the process uh, system should be uniform. So, that is why homogenization uh, term is coming. So, mixing uh, should be a term where that uh, homogenization uh, of the system uh, will be applied. And uh, another uh, important uh, feature of that mixing is that you have to reduce uh, the variability of the concentration. That means, uh, throughout the reactor you have to get the concentration of the phases in well in uh, you know that uh, uniform. So, if your uh, intensity of the mixing will be a certain degree, so that that uh, your uh, concentration will be distributed throughout the system uh, uniformly. And also not only that concentration distribution, there should be a temperature also that uh, you have to mix the system in such way that suppose in a heat transfer equipment or uh, some other uh, reactive system where uh, temperature is uh, also one governing factor. So, in that case you have to distribute the heat throughout this uh, mixture uh, in such way that the distribution of the heat should be uniform. So, that is why mixing uh, is a term that implies that homogenization of this uh, concentration, temperature or is there any other suppose uh, hydrodynamic characteristics are there, how it can be actually uh, homogenized into the system. Suppose there is a gas liquid mixer uh, where that uh, you know there some certain uh, chemical process is going on based on this uh, gas liquid mixer, where uh, droplet or uh, bubbles are uh, forming there. So, you have to distribute that bubbles or gases inside the uh, liquid in such way that uh, uh, the in all uh, location of this system that bubble concentration should be uniform or uh, droplet concentration should be uniform. So, you have to mix the system in such way you have to use the uh, gas distributor in such way that that uh, all the locations in the uh, or cross sectional average variation of this uh, concentration of this bubble number should be uniform. Also, it is important to know that uh, the scale at which this uh, variability exists and the various mixing mechanism which reduce it. So, in that case you have to scale the process in such way that this variability where that like concentration, temperature uh, or other if is there any variable variables uh, is there. So, that uh, mixing mechanism should be implied in such way that or designed in such way that that uh, reduction of this uh, you know invariability or uh, heterogeneity in the column. And most mixing process occur alongside heat uh, and uh, or mass transfer operations and chemical reactions. So, uh, where mass transfer and heat transfer, um, uh, reactive mass transfer, even uh, other uh, uh, chemical engineering processes uh, of multiphase systems, they are mixing uh, characteristics very important. So, for mass transfer operation you have to mix the system in such way that the if you are getting that well mixed concentration 
or well mixed temperature distribution there you can get the better mass transfer and also chemical reactions where suppose uh, slow reactions uh, in that case you have to mix the gas liquid system in such way that that interfacial area should be well managed well distributed through which that mass transfer will be carried out whereas in the fast reactions you will see there may not be you know the distribution of the bubbles or droplet in that case you can use some other designated unit where that low residence time will be enough to uh, get the better mass transfer operation in that case you have to develop the device in such way that gas liquid contact time um, uh, will be less and they are you know that like channel based or micro reactor system where um, uh, fast reaction can be done based on this uh, intensive contact and getting plug flow phenomena uh, that means they are only the uh, interficial phenomena where get the uh, less residence time but the fast reaction will be there. So that is why uh, you can say that mixing is uh, one of the important hydrodynamic phenomena uh, in any chemical engineering processes where multi-phase flow systems are taking part for that particular uh, process. Now if I say that uh, in any reactor uh, that your uh, chemical engineering process uh, are being carried out in that case you have to use some reactor where that reaction should be carried out. So in that case reactor engineering starts with a simple mass balance where your uh, reaction should be carried out. So in that case uh, suppose there is a reaction so what should be the inlet in the reaction uh, reactor uh, and uh, if is there any generation or consumptions of the reactants uh, whatever uh, actually uh, allowed to pass uh, into a uh, reactor. So in that case uh, uh, inlet and the generation plus consumption whatever amount will be there that should be balanced by the outlet concentration or outlet uh, stream uh, amount of outlet stream and the accumulation if is there in the process. So in plus in means here inlet uh, stream amount of inlet and generation plus consumption is there any products is generated or uh, suppose any reactants are consumed. So in that case you have to take into account those uh, uh, terms and also that uh, whatever uh, uh, stream uh, is out uh, is coming out that you have to measure what the amount of stream is out uh, coming and uh, also the uh, if is there any accumulation is there. Accumulation is possible where the inlet and outlet streams are not in a uh, same uh, measure that means here if inlet is greater than the outlet then you can say there should be some accumulation. If suppose uh, outlet is greater than the inlet then you can get the negative accumulation. So in this way you have to balance that reactive system in a reactor engineering uh, by mass balance. And the rate of this reaction in a well uh, mixed system is governed by the reaction kinetics. So in this case the mixing phenomena is the important characteristics where that rate of reactions will be depending on this uh, degree of mixing. So rate of uh, the reaction is in the well mixed uh, system is governed by the reaction kinetics which depend only upon the concentration of the species and the temperature. So you have to uh, distribute that uh, temperature and uh, you know that uh, concentration of these uh, reactants in the uh, reactor in well uh, manner. However, uh, not all systems are well mixed uh, you can say particularly at larger systems and mixing can be uh, they are a rate determining uh, for uh, process intensifications. If suppose your system is wider uh, in uh, uh, size so in that case you will see there will be a uh, gas liquid mixing or gas liquid solid mixing will be there but there will be uh, generation of circulation cell inside the reactor. So uh, if you are uh, mixing those uh, systems in the reactor you have to develop the system in such way that there uh, should be less uh, back mixing uh, generally for uh, reactive system whereas for uh, heat transfer systems back mixing sometimes it is advisable. Uh, whereas in reactive system it should not be uh, there and so the mixing is a rate determining steps or rate determining factors uh, for the process intensification there. And uh, sometimes this uh, you know wider uh, size uh, reactor uh, may uh, sometimes give the less performance due to this back mixing uh, 
of the fluid. So, uh, there you have to uh, use some mechanical provision uh, so that, that you can reduce that back mixing. Sometimes uh, three dimensional columns in such way that uh, your uh, you know width and uh, breadth should be less compared to the length and sometimes uh, you have to design in such way that they are you know that only uh, uh, there will be a uh, width will be very less whereas length will be high. So, that will be called pseudo uh, two dimensional uh, systems or two dimensional uh, unit uh, where that you can reduce one directional uh, mixing there. Sometimes uh, you know that uh, if they are suppose three dimensional mixing is there. So, at least uh, uh, in two dimensions you can uh, reduce that your uh, mixing back mixing. So, you have to uh, design that system in such way that how it can be actually optimize that mixing phenomena. And uh, also you will see that uh, if uh, suppose in their uh, fluidization operation uh, gas solid reactions are there where uh, you know that uh, adsorption is going on on the solid surface. So, if you are uh, uh, having the system in such way or design the system in such way that there will be back mixing of the solid particles there may be a you know that left performance of the mass transfer from the gaseous stream to the solid stream. Because the uh, whatever uh, adsorbent uh, you are using as a solid particles that should be get back to the uh, original uh, position or circulated so that that uh, uh, due to that uh, pressure differences there may be a uh, you know that desorption as well as adsorption uh, should be simultaneously happen. So, there may be uh, that uh, hindering of that uh, you know uh, the performance of the mass transfer. Other important task for the designer is that the, the prediction of the degree of mixing and the residence time of the species in the vessel. So, is a certain uh, reaction that uh, sometimes depends on the residence time of the reactants. So, you have to design the system in such way that for a certain degree of mixing what should be the residence time of the uh, reactants that you have to uh, predict or you have to estimate. So, by generating some both uh, some models that you can predict that degree of mixing and the residence time. And there are several methods to find out or estimate the degree of mixing uh, like you know that uh, tracer technique methods even some other uh, techniques also uh, they are available to find out that uh, degree of mixing. The tracer technique mixing uh, uh, is one of the important uh, technique by which you can predict the degree of mixing. Like you know that you have to insert some tracer in a reactor along with that uh, you know that uh, liquid stream uh, or fluid stream you can say and uh, then you have to collect uh, the sample from the uh, certain distance of that uh, you know reactor or at a certain position and after collecting that sample with respect to time you can get a certain profile of that uh, concentration variations with respect to time. And after that if you uh, get this profile and uh, compare with a certain model like there is a important model it is called tank in series model or uh, axial dispersion model. If you uh, feed those uh, concentration versus time uh, data with that uh, axial dispersion model then you can get uh, the uh, some parameters which will be actually expressed as that Peclet number. So, the by which you can uh, calculate uh, what should be the degree of mixing. The degree of mixing depends on that dispersion number or Peclet number. Dispersion number actually defined as 1 by Peclet number. Peclet number is actually basically is a you know that uh, is a function of fluid velocity and the uh, effective uh, length of the fluid mixer which is uh, lying in the uh, reactor. So, uh, to find out that degree of mixing that you have to estimate the dispersion number that means Peclet number you have to estimate then 1 by Peclet number that will give you the dispersion number. If dispersion number is uh, infinity that you can say that uh, uh, your reactor fluid mixing will be well mixed and homogenized. Whereas, if uh, dispersion number is uh, going to 0 that means there will be a, a 0 mixing or uh, it will be uh, you know that no mixing you can say. And uh, for infinity case dispersion number if it is infinity then you can say the complete mixing or complete homogenization. And based on that you can get that uh, you know that uh, residence time of the distribution uh, of the species in the vessel. So, 
the designer uh, actually find out uh, this uh, degree of mixing as well as resistance of the uh, species for analysis of the reaction for that particular process. And also another important task for the designer is that what should be the rate of species uh, uh, which are uh, created or destroyed in a reactor that requires uh, uh, for that particular uh, reacting system to actually give the uh, yield of the process. So, that depends on uh, the mixing uh, characteristics and uh, also it will uh, you know that uh, uh, effect on the reaction kinetics that means what should be the reaction is going on that some activation energy or temperature effect that will give you that uh, kinetics of the reactions like you know uh, reaction rate constant or uh, you can say that the activation energy of the systems how it will be there uh, in the reaction system. So, that can be actually calculated based on this uh, degree of mixing. So, uh, if you are having that more mixing then you will get automatically the different value of that uh, activation energy and the constant rate of reaction. So, uh, these are the important uh, criteria for the designer to uh, develop a systems based on this mixing characteristics for the process intensification. And uh, a designer uh, nowadays they are actually procuring different uh, devices uh, based on this mixing characteristics and they are trying to reduce the size of the reactor. So, in that case uh, reduction in scale is uh, one of the important uh, aspects for the process intensification. Now, what happen when the uh, scale uh, is reduced uh, for that process intensification? So, the reduction in uh, scale implied by intensification has many uh, desirable consequences uh, for chemical engineering operations like the lower mass and heat transfer resistance enabled by the reduction path lengths of the diffusion or conduction interfaces. So, if you are uh, making a system in such way that suppose micro channel uh, based reactor. So, in that case you will see that uh, path lengths may be uh, very uh, small uh, for the diffusion or the conduction uh, through the interfaces. So, in that case you can get the lower mass and heat transfer resistances. So, that, that your performance of the mass transfer operation and heat transfer operation will be enhanced. And also uh, important factor is that, that coupling with the more intense fluid uh, dynamics in active uh, enhancement equipment where you can say that uh, based on this mixing phenomena you can intensify the equipment you have to develop the equipment in such way that if you use suppose some baffles or some provisions mechanical provisions inside the reactor to get reduced the uh, back mixing of the system then you can of course intensify the process of your chemical engineering operations. So, to get the intensification process you can use sometimes you know some uh, shear producing uh, mechanical device are being used in the uh, reactor or in a certain uh, chemical engineering process equipment where you will see uh, sometimes uh, static mixers are being used, sometimes some bubbles, some you know that uh, impeller systems are being used in such way that whenever you are uh, supplying some gas uh, liquid or liquid liquid system for extraction, you will see uh, for formation of the droplet if you are rotating that uh, uh, impeller at high speed you will see that. Uh, due to that uh, shear uh, effect uh, the formation of the fine droplets will be there and hence that uh, formation of the more interfacial area and uh, you can get the more mass transfer that means the extraction process will be there more extraction uh, phenomena you can get. So, uh, more intense fluid dynamics uh, where uh, you can uh, get it by that uh, mixing by making some you know giving some provisions of mechanical devices to uh, produce that more uh, fluid particles uh, like gas and uh, uh, liquid droplets inside the reactor to get the better mass transfer and heat transfer. Allow reactions to proceed at the inherent rates also sometimes you will see if you are developing the systems or uh, reducing the scale of the system in such way that uh, when uh, you know that uh, uh, getting the contact of that gas liquid system in the suppose micro channel systems they are gas and liquid flows are there. So, you can get the more contact more thin films uh, between that gas and uh, liquid where you can get that uh, more uh, 
you know that uh, uh, reactions uh, uh, at the interface and uh, you can get the more uh, reactive mass transfer which is happening in the particular chemical engineering process. So, this can be produced just uh, uh, by their inherent uh, you know that uh, properties uh, to get the more reactive system or mass transfer system by reducing that uh, scale of the uh, unit. Also, sometimes more rapid mixing environment also can be suggested for the process intensification. Like in that case, uh, if you are uh, producing uh, the rapid mixing environment that can be afforded by the low reaction volumes that should enable uh, conservation as well as that conversion and selectivity to the maximized process unit. And also residence time distribution may be uh, substituted for the hour scale processing times that will be associated with the large conventional uh, base operations uh, which will be uh, beneficial and also consequences for the energy consumption and process safety. So, residence time distribution and the mixing environment is are the two important uh, uh, design uh, parameters uh, for the designer to actually have the uniform mixing system to get the better mass transfer, to get the better way of reaction kinetics and also enabling the conversion and selectivity and also uh, there will be some mode of application uh, where that uh, uh, this uh, uh, scale reduction may be helpful uh, based on this mixing characteristics. Now, main problem is that why to learn about this uh, mixing phenomena. Basically that understanding of the mixing is desired for the purpose of optimized operation and the design of industrial scale uh, reactors. And also in many cases you will see that uh, there should be a uh, simultaneously competitive uh, several uh, reactions that occur and uh, in that case you will see simultaneously uh, the time scale of the mixing process as well as that uh, you know that uh, degree of mixing are uh, very important uh, factors uh, to give you the uh, competitive reactions phenomena and uh, optimize system uh, to develop that particular uh, reaction system. And the progress of the reactions, the product distribution and yield are the governed by the mixing of the components in the mixer is the uh, very important aspects uh, where that uh, your uh, knowledge of mixing is important. So, how these uh, reactions are being progressed and the how product are being uh, distributed and yield are uh, governed by the mixing of the components in the mixer that uh, is uh, required to know based on this mixing phenomena. Also, you can control that degree of uh, reactions, extent of reactions or extent of mass transfer or uh, heat transfer by controlling the rate of mixing. In that case, it is possible to intensify the uh, process to uh, get the better yield. Generally, mixing time is one of the most important hydrodynamic parameters in different types of chemical engineering uh, reactors uh, for their design and the uh, scale up of the unit and also process. And uh, also uh, to intensify the yield of the commercial uh, various chemical and bioprocesses, it is important to uh, calculate or estimate the changes to design and uh, operation of the process unit that uh, lead to a reduction in mixing time. So, you have to design uh, the operating uh, unit in such way that uh, your uh, yield of the uh, reactions should be optimized based on this uh, reduction in mixing time. And also uh, mixing is a particularly important process in reactor design especially in continuous flow reactors and designing the mixing process to yield a much shorter mixing time in comparison to the uh, mean uh, residence time of the reactants in the reaction vessel. And uh, in that case it is uh, a uh, paramount uh, importance for the good operation of the uh, reactor. So, we have to know the mixing phenomena uh, for the design of the reactor uh, where this uh, reaction kinetics, reactive mass transfer and heat transfer can be optimized. Now, what are the uh, factors those are uh, actually affecting the mixing time? Generally, uh, there are uh, several uh, variables that affect on that uh, mixing time or 
uh, degree of mixing there. Generally, we can uh, categorize uh, these uh, variables in uh, four types like you know that first one is like dynamic variables. In that case, uh, flow rate is called the dynamic variables. So, if you are increasing the flow rate, you can get the more mixing and in that case, uh, there may be back mixing will be there, there may be uh, internal circulation of the fluid mixing so that you can get the more residence time of the fluid particles. So, uh, dynamic variables like flow rate is one of the important uh, factor. Then you can say uh, uh, geometric variables uh, like uh, you know that uh, if you are using any reactor, what is the size of the reactor and uh, if you are using some catalyst particles for a particular reaction, uh, in that case uh, uh, what should be the you know uh, the size of the catalyst particles, if you reduce the size of the particles you can get more interfacial area of the particles and then you can get more uh, you know that uh, mass transfer, sometimes some adsorption processes if you are getting more uh, you know that porous materials and finer porous materials then you can get more mass transfer because of the more interfacial area of the solid particles. So, in that case the size of the particles and also size of the reactor, if you are making that uh, reactor size is wider then you can get uh, more uh, you know that uh, uh, internal circulation of the fluid particles that is radial um, uh, distribution of that uh, uh, reactants will be more. So, in that case sometimes it may hinder the reaction performance, but some physical processes it may be uh, actually suitable uh, uh, like uh, uh, heat transfer processes for uniform distribution of the heat, you can suggest that uh, uh, more you know radial mixing more internal circulation of the fluid uh, system inside the reactor that may enhance the uh, uh, heat transfer operation. So, the geometric variables you can say the reactor size, reactor length also is important and catalyst uh, size. Sometimes you will see in a particular uh, reactor sometimes gas uh, distributors are or liquid uh, distributors are being used uh, uh, for uh, you know that uh, supplying that gas as a dispersed phase of bubbles or uh, distributing the liquid as a dispersed phase of droplet. In that case, the distributor hole size, distributor uh, you know that uh, pore size uh, should be uh, optimized in such way that you can uh, make more finer droplet or more finer bubbles just by making that uh, hole size or orifice size of the uh, uh, you know that distributor. So, that is why the distributor hole size is also one of the important factor for this mixing time or mixing uh, processes there. Another important variables is called uh, fluid properties. You know that uh, whatever fluids are being used for that particular processes like you know liquid you are sometimes uh, being used, sometimes you know the solvents are being used, sometimes uh, you know only uh, slurry systems are being used. So, in that case what will be the physical properties of those systems like uh, what is the density, what is the viscosity, what is the you know that concentration of that system. So, those are uh, actually some uh, you know that f uh, factors uh, which will affect this mixing time and as well as the degree of mixing. And also the level of the fluid mixer inside the column that is height of the uh, mixing mixer that is fluid mixer inside the column that is also one important because there one important factor is that pressure, hydrostatic pressure will be you know changing as well as that uh, to get uh, you know uh, that axial dispersion of that system uh, that depends on mixer height as well as uh, to get the more residence time uh, for that uh, uh, species you can uh, uh, actually <laughs> elongate the unit or you can produce that uh, level of the fluid mixer high inside the column. Generally for fluidization system, fluidized bed system, uh, you know pneumatic fluidized bed system they are you know that uh, level of the fluid mixer should be high to get uh, that segregation of that uh, dense region and the uh, free board region there. So, that is why uh, fluid mixer height is one of the important uh, phenomena. Now, this determines the overall rate of the reactions if the mixing times and the degree of mixing if you know based on these factors and uh, much larger than the reaction times uh, their uh, overall rate of reactions will be there based on these uh, uh, factors of 
those are affecting the mixing time as well as degree of mixing. Now, uh, let us consider some uh, phenomena for the slow reactions and the fast reaction. For very slow chemical reaction that is relative to the uh, time scale for mixing of the uh, reactants, the extent of reaction is determined by the uh, reaction kinetics and the stoichiometric uh, you know uh, proportions of the reactants there. And when the reaction is uh, relatively fast in that case uh, mixing rate, physical factors like a sparging design, column diameter, rate of uh, you know stirring, solvent, viscosity uh, uh, that is those are uh, different you know dynamic you know that geometric physical property variables and also some other variables is there. Sometimes very intense thermodynamic variables also important there pressure and temperature. So, those factors will be actually considered for this fast reactions there to optimize this reaction. And uh, the intense mass transfer and uh, micro mixing uh, capability of the rotating pack bed provides the environment to reduce the reaction time that is 4 to 10 fold compared to the start tank reactors. That is why you will see that why this uh, for the process intensification this uh, you know that micro mixing or micro reactors are being actually developed because it gives uh, this higher uh, mass transfer and also sometimes you see if we develop some rotating pack bed as a process intensification unit then how this rotating pack bed uh, provides the good environment of uh, reacting system where that you can uh, reduce uh, the reaction time uh, 4 to the 10 fold that is compared to the star tank reactors. So, that is why nowadays star tank reactors are now actually uh, uh, less important than this uh, you know rotating pack bed uh, reactors. Of course, uh, every reactors have some pros and cons, but sometimes some star tank reactants will be more easier to operate whereas, rotating pack bed may not be easier to operate and also the investment cost will be higher compared to that star tank reactors will be there. Now, you have to remember that uh, in order to exert uh, full control over the progress of a chemical reaction or uh, physical uh, transformation, the fluid dynamic environment uh, must be uh, sufficiently intense uh, uh, so that uh, the uh, mixing and the heat transfer rates are faster that will be compared to the you know that uh, other systems uh, than the intrinsic chemical kinetics. So, in that case you have to remember this that uh, control over that reacting system based on the mixing phenomena. Example, rate of polymerization that uh, happens uh, via a series of uh, you know that radical reactions and in that case uh, that can be controlled by the micro mixing environment within the polymer uh, you know melt. So, this is one of the important uh, examples where that you know uh, you can uh, control this polymerization reaction based on this uh, micro mixing environment. Now, the influence of mixing and the reaction rates on the reactor uh, behavior, how uh, the slow mixing actually progress uh, of a reaction uh, that represented uh, here at this uh, uh, simple diagram uh, like uh, there is a reaction A plus uh, B which will give you the C with the reactants like A and B that will travel in a plug flow along a tubular reactor. Whereas, uh, you can say that uh, in this uh, slow mixing there will be a certain uh, diffusion that uh, inter diffusion will happen between uh, this uh, A and B and which should be very slow compared to the reaction rate. Then C is produced near the original plane of the uh, A and B uh, that is AB uh, separation there. So, uh, for the slow reactions it is the uh, mechanism that progress of reaction that will be represented by this uh, A plus B to C reactions where that reactants A and B should be travelled in a plug flow or tubular reactor. So, in that case micro channel based reactor for this process intensification are important. In this case inter diffusion of this A B should be very slow compared to the reaction rate that is happens in the other unit. And uh, if the mixing uh, is slow, large and varying concentration gradients of the reactant species will exist in the different parts of the reactor. So, that is also to be remembered that uh, how you are optimizing the system based on this mixing, whether it is slow or fast. 
So, if results is wide variations in the product concentrations and uh, properties uh, that may be uh, deemed of spec in uh, you know many applications. So, that is you have to remember the mixing is whether slow or fast according to that you have to intensify the process uh, and also develop the process unit. And the slow mixing that represents a total loss of control on the uh, two counts like one is that suppose there is a AB reactions that AB stoichiometric ratio that will vary widely across the reactor diameter. Therefore, the selectivity for the uh, desired product uh, C is likely to be compromised because uh, a uh, you know that uh, more uh, uh, realistic reaction scheme that will usually uh, include many side reactions there. And uh, another point is that uh, the most of the reaction that is uh, give you that uh, C uh, in the immediate neighborhood of the plane of this A and B separation as shown here in the figure. In this case uh, uh, hence uh, on the small fraction of the uh, available reactor volume uh, will be utilized and an opportunity for the intensification will be lost. So, these are the two uh, counts to be remembered for the slow mixing uh, for the total uh, loss of control. For the fast mixing you will see uh, when the mixing uh, will be uh, so fast uh, the AV ratio should be uniform and it should be control over the product spectrum and uh, also the reactor space uh, should be used to maximize uh, this effect and also intrinsic kinetics are should uh, to be allowed uh, in a free range where the reactor is able to operate the maximum intensity that will be permitted by the specific chemical system. Now, uh, if we go to that uh, the different other uh, mixing mechanism like the turbulent mixing, mixing uh, scales mechanism and mixing times in a single phase turbulent flow systems you will see that there are three distinct mixing scales that influence a chemical process like macro mixing, meso mixing and micro mixing. These are the three different uh, mixing scales uh, generally are considered for the intensification of the chemical processes. These are defined on the basis of their uh, you know characteristics length and uh, uh, directly related uh, with the turbulent energy dissipation rate. So, based on the energy dissipation in case of uh, turbulent condition uh, you can uh, actually optimize that mixing characteristics. So, that is why sometimes uh, in a reactor some provisions are made to you know that uh, get the intense mixing inside the fluid based on this uh, turbulent flow. If you are uh, supplying the uh, fluid mixer or you know inlet uh, streams as a high uh, flow rate and uh, if you are uh, using some provisions like baffles inside the reactor and cross baffles or sometimes you see some you know nowadays you know that helical coil systems are also important there and uh, inside that helical coils if you use some you know uh, some uh, nozzles uh, that will uh, uh, strike your flow of the uh, system. So, at high flow rate whenever it will go through this you know provisions of this helical systems or some coil <coughs> systems there you know there will be a uh, you know uh, intense uh, shear stress inside the reactor. So, based on that intense shear stress high energy dissipation inside the reactor uh, this uh, fluid gets more uh, you know turbulent and uh, because of which there will be a uh, higher energy distribution and dissipation and get the more mixing inside the reactors. And uh, the path of the fluid mixing uh, you may also get the change by just giving this uh, provisions of this baffles or that some uh, nozzles or some some obstructions inside the reactors so that the uh, mixing times maybe will be uh, higher or lower based on that uh, you know design. Now, uh, if we uh, see this uh, uh, figure as shown uh, here in the slides. Uh, that uh, turbulent mixing how uh, actually uh, this uh, uh, in uh, various length scales this uh, mixing are happened you know macro mixing, meso mixing and micro mixing are there. So, if we are considering the modes uh, of this mixing then we can have this macro mixing like in the vessel that is bulk convection of this fluid will be happened 
whereas uh, in the meso mixing in that case turbulence eddies will be formed some chunk of the fluid elements will be you know that generated inside the uh, reactor or inside the unit and uh, those uh, chunks of the fluid elements will be called as eddies which will be uh, arbitrary or you know that uh, random motions will be there and uh, getting that intense uh, mixing inside the uh, reactor or unit and there will be formations of that vortex shedding by this eddies and by energy dissipation. So, uh, you can get this meso mixing this this type of phenomenon is called meso mixing and uh, here uh, this micro mixing in this case you will say that uh, producing some channel based where uh, you know that plug flow phenomena will be produced and some engulfment uh, phenomena will be produced of this fluid element or deformation of this fluid element uh, just making that uh, different provisions here in the uh, reactor inside the reactors or sometimes you know that coil type reactors to be produced so that there will be a uh, you know change of uh, you know engulfment like maybe that secondary flow will be produced that will give you the more mixing of the fluid element and that uh, deformations also sometimes some provisions will be there that fluid elements will be deformated, uh, fluid streams will be deformated and in that case there will be a mixing and also diffusions will happen there that is molecular diffusions will happen molecular level the convective diffusions will be less compared to that molecular diffusion there through the thin uh, fluid uh, layer so that that you can get the more uh, you know that molecular level diffusion mechanism. <coughs> in the case of macro mixing you will see uh, that for this uh, macro mixing turbulent diffusion there should be there. So, inertia convective inertia will be there and also turbulent diffusion in case of meso mixing will be observed inertia convective terms will be there that is convective inertia will be produced because of which that energy dissipation. And in the case of micro mixing there will be a momentum diffusion and molecular diffusion both will be there because that engulfment for formation and deformation of that fluid element that is why momentum diffusion and molecular diffusion will be the major effect there. And if you are considering the time scale what will be the time uh, that will be required for the macro mixing. For that macro mixing you will see that uh, what will be the energy will be dissipated that will be directly uh, related in that case you know degree of mixing will be directly related to that energy dissipation whereas mixing time will be inversely related to that energy dissipation. If you are considering the epsilon as energy dissipation, so for the macro mixing the time of mixing will be uh, proportional to the epsilon to the power uh, minus 1 by 3 whereas for turbulent eddies it will be also the same that should be proportional to the uh, inverse of this one cubic root of that uh, energy dissipation that is TMIT here. Similarly, uh, for micro mixing uh, this uh, time of mixing or mixing time uh, it is inversely proportional to the square root of that uh, energy dissipation. So, uh, this uh, based on this time scale that uh, that macro mixing, meso mixing and micro mixing how this time scale is actually depending on that energy dissipation that you can get it from this idea. Now, energy dissipated mixing the intensity of the mixing at each of these uh, scales that is uh, macro, meso or micro is significantly influenced by the you know uh, that mechanical energy input uh, into the system by mixing device and it is generally assumed that uh, higher energy input translates into a higher energy dissipation rate for better mixing. The kinetic energy imparted to the uh, fluid is ultimately dissipated as uh, internal energy which occurs at the smallest uh, length scales of turbulence and uh, that will uh, give you that the time scale which will be represented by that Kalmo uh, Garab uh, you know that uh, time scale there. Now, characterization of the various mixers and reactors in terms of their energy dissipation rates here are some examples some <laughs> intensification of the unit are there like start tank reactors in that case energy dissipation rate per unit um, you know mass of that fluid system that will be 0 0.12 uh, 100 watt and uh, for the static mixture for this mixing their energy dissipation is 1 to 1000 uh, watt per kg. Impinging jet reactors are important reactors where that fluid is uh, actually coming into the pool of the liquid and impinges on the uh, pool of the liquid to make the or entrain the other fluid element. So, this is called impinging jet reactors they are intense mixing by the jet energy. So, in that energy dissipation rate should be 
22 uh, you know 6800 watt per uh, kg like uh, rotor stator spinning disc reactor thin film spinning disc reactors their energy dissipation should be or uh, is or uh, you know that uh, uh, less than 6000 watt per kg so this illustrates the potential capability of the intensified systems such as a static mixer rotor stator mixers and the spinning disc reactor among others to provide the higher level of mixing intensity than the other conventional mixing devices. In the case of macro mixing that involves the mixing on the macroscopic scale which refers to the scale of the vessel or reactors, the process is often referred to as uh, you know the distributive uh, mixing and it is achieved by bulk motion of the fluid element and that is transported by you know that uh, liquid at the macroscopic scale and uh, uh, resulting in uniform spatial distribution of the fluid elements uh, across the reactor volume. And in a continuous flow reactor you will see that uh, the macro mixing process directly influences the residence time distribution of the feed stream that is introduced into the uh, reactor. And the macro mixing time in a uh, mechanically stirred baffled tank that is uh, tau mac we can represent it that will be a function of the mean uh, circulation time that is means uh, how much circulation time will be there inside the reactor of the fluid element that will affect this uh, macro mixing time. So, that circulation time is actually defined as volume of the reactor divided by what is the flow rate uh, of the circulation or you can the circulation rate and in a vessel that is configured for the optimized mixing that tau max should be uh, 3 times of that uh, circulation uh, time. In case of start tank reactor that circulation time is uh, defined by this equation here uh, the V by C D into N D cube C D is the discharge coefficient of the impeller if it is being used for the start tank reactor and it is a constant which typically varies between 0 0.7 and 1 that depending on the uh, impeller uh, design. In a non-optimized systems this uh, uh, macro mixing time should be 5 times of that circulation time and uh, the mean circulation time is generally expressed in terms of the impeller pumping capacity also that is denoted by Q c here. For meso mixing you know uh, that will refer to you know coarse scale and uh, dispersive mixing uh, via turbulent eddies that eddies will actually arbitrarily randomly uh, moved inside the reactor and it will be characterized by two different mechanism like one is turbulent dispersion of the fresh feed that will be introduced to a vessel which uh, mixes with its total surroundings and uh, other is inertia uh, convective uh, breakup of the you know large eddies sometimes you are using that uh, different uh, provisions that eddies should be broken up into a smaller eddies and uh, then uh, you can get the you know very small scale of this uh, interaction of these two eddies there and then you can enhance that uh, meso mixing uh, time there. The characteristics time scale associated with the turbulent dispersion you know by turbulent that will be dispersion the turbulent dispersion it is denoted by that uh, you know uh, time scale of that uh, you know the meso mixing uh, dispersion. So, that will be uh, represented by tau d and it can be defined by that qf by ud turbulent here if r pipe is less than less than is equal to uh, ld ld is the you know that uh, dispersion length characteristics uh, uh, length scale of the dispersion and uh, also r is the pipe diameter you know uh, that uh, d uh, turbulence the uh, dispersion coefficient of that uh, turbulent uh, medium and the turbulent scheme of this uh, you know dispersion so, tau d that will be r square pipe by d turbulent if uh, pipe of the reactor or you know that uh, radius of the pipe uh, if it is almost equals to the characteristics length or if it is greater than uh, you know characteristics length you can define by this equation here. And also uh, you can say uh, that uh, uh, dispersion coefficient at this turbulent uh, uh, motion it will be 0 0.1 to epsilon to the power 1 by 3 into L d to the power 4 by 3 this epsilon is called energy dissipation per unit mass and L d is the characteristics length in that uh, uh, turbulent dispersion. And the inertial convective meso mixing time scale that will be represented by tau s 
that will be defined by this equation here as uh, shown in this uh, here uh, the slides where a is a uh, constant that will have uh, a value between 1 and 2 that depends on the turbulence level in the uh, system. And then uh, you know uh, the micromixing represents the uh, final stage of the turbulent mixing process which uh, proceeds at mass uh, you know final length uh, scales that uh, macro or meso mixing that will referred by uh, Kolmogorov uh, or Wessler's length scale. The Kolmogorov uh, you know the length scale uh, represents the smallest scale of uh, you know the turbulence before viscosity effects that will dominate and also Bassler length scale it is denoted by eta B uh, represents the smallest scale of the fluctuations prior to the molecular diffusion. So, micromixing molecular diffusion uh, uh, prevails there. Also, <laughs> this uh, Kolgomorov or uh, that uh, uh, you know that Bessler length scale can be defined by this here uh, equation given uh, here uh, eta k and eta b where this mid number S c for liquids is typically for the order of 10 to the power 3. So, that eta b should be very less than eta k. For aqueous solutions in turbulent regimes, this eta k is of the order of 10 to 30 millimeters. So, based on this, that uh, criteria of this length scale of this micromixing that devices are developed uh, for getting more mass transfer and heat transfer in the systems. Uh, I think uh, uh, I have uh, covered some uh, this process intensification phenomena based on this uh, mixing characteristics. Uh, so, uh, uh, this uh, lecture will be helpful for the process intensification criteria uh, where you are considering the design of uh, any uh, you know micro reactors or other reactors based on this time scale uh, and uh, it will be helpful for you uh, for this process intensification system. And for further reading I am suggesting uh, the textbook to follow. And in the next uh, uh, lecture onward we will also uh, discuss something more about this you know that uh, the process intensification based on other uh, characteristics. So, thank you for this lecture.